Hi, I'm Max, and in this video I'll tell you about how homeostasis works for larger systems such as society, your family, and your friend group, and how they limit you. If you want to know how your own homeostasis limits you, then you can go ahead and watch part one. So, homeostasis is the mechanism which keeps things at balance, your body temperature, and even your mind. And this mechanism works not only within ourselves, but also larger systems, such as society, your family, and your friend groups. So how does the homeostasis of our society, our family, and our friend groups limit us? Well, if we try to change ourselves, even if the change is positive, you might notice that you're gonna face backlash. And that backlash has to do with their ideas of you, not how you actually are, but their ideas of you. If you get too out of alignment with their ideas of you, they will forcibly try to bring you back. And that backlash happens because systems inherently don't like change. Now what's changing here when you change yourself is their idea of you. They don't want to change that. Everyone has a certain idea of who and what you are, and they don't wish to change that idea one bit. That's why when you try to implement changes, whether they be positive or negative, if it changes yourself to be out of alignment with that idea, then you will face backlash from them. Now if you change your diet, your sleeping habits, or really any other habit, whether it be positive or negative, now if that change is big, your family and friends will likely have a very negative reaction to it. They'll seek to get you back to their idea of who you were. Now the severity of a backlash that a system has can be summarized with this formula. Now the severity of the backlash equals the amount of change times the speed of the change. Meaning, if you make a lot of change in a short amount of time, the backlash will be big. Now remember that you also have the option of instead of making massive life changes, you can incrementally work your way up there. That way, you avoid a lot of backlash. And now, how the mechanism of homeostasis might look in reality. As an example, we can take that you go on a diet and quit alcohol. Okay, so you decide to go on a diet. You're in a family which previously ate meat, and now you're deciding to go vegan. Your family might have a tough time adjusting to that change. They might tease you for it, they might question it to death. They'll start asking, will you get enough calories? Will you get enough protein? Will you get enough nutrients from this diet? They'll start questioning it to death. And I recognize that this is just them trying to get you back to the level that they're used to. They're trying to get you back to eat how you usually do. Now starting a diet can be substituted with any other change. The same concept applies. A change rocks a system out of equilibrium, and it'll seek to return to it. Okay, so then the second example. If you usually go out drinking with your friends, and you decide to quit alcohol for good, your friends will of course try and get you back to the drinking. They'll start teasing you for having stopped drinking, calling you weak or a pussy. But again, realize that they're just trying to get you back to the level that they're used to. Now recognize that you are living inside of a system, and it's called society. Now society also has ideas about who you should be. If you behave like everyone else, you're living according to the wants of our culture, according to the equilibrium of our culture and how it sees normal people. Now, if you don't want a backlash from your culture, be normal, be the average person, work nine to five in a boring job that you don't enjoy and live an unfulfilling life. Now, if you want a truly fulfilling life, be unlike anyone else, live an exciting life. Now, living a fulfilling life means going against the grain of what your culture is used to. Now, this doesn't mean that you go around doing whatever the hell you want, killing people, stealing. That doesn't bring you any happiness. But pursue things that aren't normal. Pursue things that actually grow you. But remember that if you live differently than everyone else, you will likely face backlash. Now, you just have to accept that everyone won't like you, especially if you're different. Now, recognize that culture limits us by pulling us back to being like everyone else. But look around you, look at the average person. Do you think that average person is happy? No, he simply tricked himself into believing that that's what happiness is when he's working a nine to five job that he doesn't even like. He is not engaged in what drives him at all. And do you think that's what a fulfilling life is? The normal person has a lot of problems, both financially and relationship wise. They don't work in a job that they're truly passionate for, they're very neurotic and they have a lot of internal problems within them, maybe even addictions. But overall, they don't live to their potential. Now you don't want that kind of life, but this is the default position of going with the flow. If you don't plan your life, if you simply go with education and get a job after that, 
This is the position that you'll get. When I look around myself, I see how miserable people are. And I've realized I don't want that. And you probably don't either. Now the problem is, even if we try to change ourselves, to be more loving, be more conscious, our environment will seek to get us back. Now know that those closest to us will be the most affected by our change. And hence, they'll have the strongest reactions to them. So for instance, changing our diet will affect mostly our family. And they will have the strongest reactions. Now a political party will not be changed a lot by you changing your diet, of course. Hence, they won't have any reactions against it. But if you have a lot of influence and you change yourself, then again that can have a stronger effect to a bigger group of people. So what can you practically do to be less affected by the homeostasis of others? Now if you try to change yourself and implement positive habits, and you're facing backlash, don't listen to the naysayers unless they've tried that same thing themselves or they're otherwise just experts on the subject. So if you've recently started working out, don't listen to the people saying, oh, you can't do it, you can't succeed. Now listen to yourself. Is this choice positive or negative? Ask that of yourself. Now I know it's hard if you're trying to implement positive changes into your life and your friends and family aren't exactly supporting it, but recognize that that's just their mechanism of homeostasis at work. And that will pass with time. They'll get used to your change and stop pestering you about it. And remember, to live a good life, you have to stop listening to everything that other people say. And you have to try to be different. Learn to trust yourself. But don't forget that homeostasis is also a mechanism within yourself. You might start to question your own positive changes too. This is why you have to trust your own intuition, your gut feeling instead of your thoughts. Now, seek to live a life outside the equilibrium of our mainstream culture. That's how you live a fulfilling life. Pursue personal development, pursue emotional mastery, and pursue spirituality. And that's all I have to say for today. Out.